Welcome to the K-Pop Cast. I'm your K-Pop host on the West Coast, calling in from San Francisco, and I'm joined by our K-Pop DJ, Peter Lowe. Hello, everybody. And we also have our PD name, Michaela. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Today, we'll be talking about the brand new JYP girl group, ITZY, and their debut song, Tala Tala. Letting you know if this song is Taebak or not. But before we dive into that, First, our hit replays. Hit replays are songs we recommend y'all listen to on replay for the week. So, Stephanie, tell us, what's your hit replay? Well, I think in a decision that comes as a surprise to absolutely no one, I am (laughs) over the moon about Tae Min's comeback single, Mm -hmm. Want. Mm. All of our Twitter <laughs> followers, by the way, hella wanted. Really? Tame in. The thirst yes. is real. The thirst was on real. On Twitter <laughs> and elsewhere. So real. I don't need to say too much about this one, but Tayman is such a talented dancer. He's just killing the game. Mm-hmm. And the Michael Jackson influence mm-hmm. is super cool in the video. So go check it out. You're going to want even more. <laughs> I think I have a crush on Taemin too, and that sex appeal is so <gasps> raw. Mm. It's dripping. Like, it, it comes through the screen and it, it hits my face. And, uh, All the right, X okay. Ratios. Thank okay. you. This is our, our straight male co host. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are we saying in? here? Uh, okay. <laughs> Michaela, what's your hit replay? Uh, well, my hit replay is Dreamcatcher's PDD. So this is, again, Dreamcatcher being Dreamcatcher, but there are these awesome sort of trap percussions that come out in the verses that give, like, (laughs) all of the the rap verses this real, like, cool hip-hop vibe. So I I have to... It's been raining really bad recently, and this is the song that gets me up and, like, going to the gym in the morning. (laughs) Ooh, I need that. It's so dark and edgy in only a way that Dreamcatcher could provide. Hello, what's your hit replay for today? The most like awesomely Taba catchy AF song of all time. It's Hwasa and her all song. All time. Twit. All twit, time. Twit, 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 I, I can't pronounce it, but you, you know what I'm. T W I T. Yeah. Twit. This song is so catchy because the instrumental of the song employs our favorite Migos triplet. The <laughs> da 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 da. da. And you hear that in the music. And Hwasa has such confidence that it's reflected in that aggressive, raw, sexual choreography. <laughs> the only problem I have with it, though, is that Hwasa has, like, the best body in all of K-pop. <laughs> How is that a problem? Well, yeah. because they put her in the worst outfits. Like, at one point, oh. she's literally wearing a plastic bag. A plastic oh. bag! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> So moving on to our day back or not for Itzy's Tala Tala. some hella Taebak songs for this week. Songs that we all love. And now we'll talk at length about a song that we're not so excited about. Just kidding. Wait, what? Uh, just Whoa. kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> um, well, let, let, let's see. Let's dive into the background of this new goo group. Yes. Stephanie, take us away. Thank you very much. Woo. So the group Itzy, uh, in Korean pronounced Itchi, means 
the girls have everything you want. Itchy Ooh. in Korean. Ah. And it also sounds really cute. Itsy, itsy bitsy spider, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that fits them really well. Uh, the group has been wildly successful already in their debut. They broke the YouTube record for most views for a debut group in 24 hours. Can you believe wow. it? I'm, I'm just waiting record. until the next one. There, there's that, that record keeps getting broken. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, there's there's more and more debuts, and they have a target to hit. So, but again, for for a girl group, a new girl group, that's still amazing. Yes, it really is. But just to give you a sense of how far they blew the record out of the water, the previous record holder, Eyes One, had 4.5 million views in a day. Mm. Itzy hit almost 14 million views wow. in 24 hours. So that's just a little scale for you there. So. Itzy is JYP's new baby girl group. All the members mm-hmm. are so young, born yes. between 2000 and 2003. Ooh, I feel I, so people old. People aren't allowed to be born after that no. year. <laughs> I just thought people would stop being born. So while the members are super young babies, we've actually seen a bunch of them pre-debut. They've been on the various audition talent shows like SBS's The Fan. That's where we saw mm. the leader, Ye Ji, mm. or Ponytail Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 2PM's Junho on that show introduced her as JYP Entertainment's secret weapon. Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah, especially hyping her up. And then other members in cu- include Che Ryong, who I think is super cute, and is sister to Eyes One's Che Yeon. Uh, then mm. we have Yu Jin, who I think is probably my bias because she has that low voice and dances mm-hmm. really well too. And then the Magne is Yuna. Uh, you might recognize her from BTS's highlight reel. She's the girl in the hospital with Jungkook. Go ah. look her up. Yeah, I think Ryujin, she was also in the highlight reel too, right? With J-Hope and Jimin. Yes, yeah, she gave the cake, right? Mm-hmm. So we've, we've seen these girls around a little mm. bit, but really excited for their official debut where they take center stage. That's right. Yes. So what does their debut mean? Well, I, I gave it my best shot, guys, and I'm not going to say with any degree of like 100% certainty <laughs> this is what it absolutely means, but I think I'm fairly certain that this is the main message they're trying to get across. In our last <laughs> episode for CLC, no, it was all about, you can't put me into a box. Well, mm-hmm. this is that exact same message, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except in a different way, in a different <laughs> way. It's familiar. a very different you know, presentation and, and uh, slightly different message delivery. So yeah. the lyrics, I, they, they start off by pointing out how the more different you are from the rest, the more eyes you'll attract. And we see that actually in the cameras. The like very cameras, they're all following that one girl. Because mm-hmm. when you're different, you stick out and people watch that. And as an idol, you get hyper scrutiny. You're watched from... Stephanie, can you tell me how you say it in Korean? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> from head to toe. <laughs> That's one of my favorite phrases. It's in a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. The girls are saying, yes, there's something different about me, but that's what I love. I don't need to change or be measured by your conventional expectations. I don't need Mm -mm. your judgmental baggage, as we see shown in the the music video. And it's after they come to that realization, like where they they learn to accept themselves, we see them, quote unquote, pass in those TSA, like airport screeners. And like BTS... They've learned to cool. love themselves. So you can be yourself <laughs> in whatever color that is, or you can go down whatever path you choose. So for the visuals, I have two yes. words for you. Seizure inducing. Yes. Or yeah. changing colors. Or mm-hmm. rainbow vomit. <laughs> rainbow vomit, yes. <laughs> Basically, uh, the colors are changing in the teaser images. The dog changes colors. The colors of the houses in the background, they're constantly changing. You feel like you're in an endless DDR disco dance floor extravaganza. <laughs> it's just so essence of K-pop. Mm-hmm. Even with the product placement. Yeah. Of course, it wouldn't <laughs> it be K-pop. It's so also obviously a Kia commercial. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't be K-pop <laughs> if there weren't some product placement. And this one mm-hmm. is really obvious. You see the girls dancing on top of Kia SUVs in what looks to be an endless parking lot or possibly the 10 freeway. <laughs> the outfits are 
super cute. You actually see yeah. the girls changing clothes from kind of baggy airport fashion into sparkly nightclub dresses. But that very first scene is interesting, and if you blink, you might miss it because they get into an elevator slash changing room to mm-hmm. change into the clothes. But then they notice that a camera is watching them, mm-hmm. and they notice they don't like it. They throw the clothes on the camera to block the view, and that I think is a nod to、uh, actually a serious sensitive issue going on in Korea right now, which is hidden camera pornography. Yeah,、um, people yeah. will place cameras in bathrooms. In dressing rooms, hoping to catch, you know, women changing and with their clothes off and、uh, putting that on the internet. It's a big problem. There's protests across the country, and it's kind of Korea's hashtag #MeToo moment right now. Yeah.、Um, so for the a debut girl group to right at the beginning of their video kind of take that issue on,、mm. I, I I like it. I'm glad you, you know? put it up in that way because when I saw that, I was like. Wow, that is incredibly disturbing. Like, why? Why、mm. are we, you know, being this voyeur to what we already know、mm. is a very bad epidemic? But the way you're putting it, Stephanie, they're acknowledging, yes, this is a problem. Yeah, and it's kind of the reverse with Twice. I mean, like in their music videos, the camera is usually like a character, and it's something that they're、mm-hmm. trying to attract the attention of the camera. So, in this case, it's bringing in that. Social message. It's like, hey, this camera is actually a negative、yeah. thing in this case. So, on this note of like changing colors, like at the beginning, we see them wear largely black and white outfits, and yeah, there's、mm-hmm. sparkles, but those same sparkles by the very end of the music video are suddenly colorful because of all these different like color filters、yeah. on their outfits. So it's like this evolution of going from black to white, and black and white in the camera itself.、Mm-hmm. Maybe that camera black and whiteness is the viewer judging these girls. And as the lyrics point to, you can't judge me. I am uncategorizable. Like I am. All the colors of the rainbow <laughs> in the bridge of the song. That's where it climaxes because we get hyper color rainbow vomit. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're on、nice. a hyper animated, colorful psychedelic trip. Right. I think that in this video with this particular message, it works though because. Every few seconds, just as you're getting used to the look and feel of a certain scene or setting,、mm-hmm. the camera actually does some distortion, as if you're watching TV and the channel, this like the satellite isn't working. It cuts out like, <laughs> and it changes to a completely different setting or scene. So it's kind of like you can't pin the girls down and you can't pin the song down and where they are. So it matches with the lyrics quite well. Yeah. yeah. One last thing that I wanted to say on the kind of girl power. Feminist angle、mm-hmm. is that、yeah. if you look at the way the cameras are positioned and interact with the girls, the very first two scenes actually the cameras are positioned up top, looking down on the girls, which is known in theory as the male gaze, usually looking down、mm. on the on the women and kind of dominating、okay. the the view there. But then it immediately switches to the girls looking down on the camera, the camera looking up at them,、uh. and their face is kind of confidently above or dominating. The viewer.、Mm. I think it's an excellent choice for this song and for this girl group's de- debut in particular to use the camera angles to their advantage in that way. Oh, that's a good、mm. thing. I never noticed、Definitely. that. I, I've watched this video many times today. <laughs> <laughs> All these visuals,、yes. I think, says、yes. something about the choreography. Whenever I watch、mm-hmm. their live performances, they their outfits themselves again are typically. To date, have largely been in the black and white ones that we see at the beginning of the music video, but they're surrounded by really distracting backgrounds. <laughs> <Yeah> . And I, I think it was trying to show that again that they can't be tied down and that there are many different things. But what did you guys、mm. think of the choreography? For me, the choreography also reflecting the message is also very strong. It's still that basic kind of. Girl group choreography where it's focused on a lot of arm movements and things like that, but every beat that they hit is very strong and they make very clear pictures with their bodies, and that's that's expected because they're they're from JYP. They're、mm-hmm. they are expected to be very good dancers, and like we've seen with some of their pre debut stuff, they are they are really great, amazing performers、mm. in this group. I was I was especially impressed by Liu Jin's. Dance ability. She has、mm-hmm. such. She has technique. She has strength. She has like swag with her facial expressions. I was really taken with her dance ability. Yeah. When it comes to girl crush concepts, I feel like those、mm-hmm. tend to get covered a lot more by the K-pop dance crews who are very good. But is the point dance 
viral? Will it become viral from watching this choreography? I think that there might be just too much going on in the choreo yeah. to really yeah. identify an an iconic move or to to be really snackable and digestible by a lot of the cover groups and cover individuals out there. Like I don't see a Tala Tala challenge really taking yeah. off. And you, and you haven't seen it, but I guess if you could pick out one, at least for me, one of the key choreographies is when they do say Dala Dala and they, they kind of do this hand movement where they're sort of like emphasizing their, their face and they're just like... Oh, framing the face? Yeah, it's sort of framing their face mm-hmm. and being very like confident in like who they are and they do that multiple times. And that one, like after I watched the video, I, I was kept doing that motion again and again because <laughs> it was very catchy. It's like, oh, yeah, just hype yourself up. But other than that, like you said, there's no real push for like one specific move is like the point choreography. Mm-hmm. But if I could maybe say one was, it'd probably be that just because, again, it happens during the dala dala point of the, mm. the song. Well, my favorite part was, I think, the bridge where first they do a clock formation with their arms and yes. then when one girl is in the middle, all of the other members sway like palm fronds or yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. like fanning her or like the the, the blow up man in, in a car <laughs> sales parking lot. <laughs> I, really, I thought that was unique and yeah. really cool. And, that, and that's the thing. Like, there are only five people in this group. So when it comes only to... Only five. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, only five. <laughs> the, when it comes to the sort of, like, the group, the group pictures that they make, like, you compare it, like, to... to people like like twice in 17 where they have so many bodies right. on stage right. to do this amazing background stuff while one person is dancing in front or maybe mm. a few people True. but there it's still a testament to like they're still able to do really cool things like you said like the tiktok thing or the blow up noodle guy thing <laughs> or whatever the other thing that i noticed was that this is a really upbeat song i know we're about to get to the audio in a second but if you notice when the girls are dancing they're bouncing at all times on the beat as as the baseline carries them there's so many moves in the choreography and they're constantly going up and down to the beat Mm -hmm. so always in motion always moving the formation changes seem really extreme i think because there's so few girls and there's so much room (laughs) to to cover well a lot Mm. more attention per per girl i guess true i learned all of their names going up and down (laughs) like an elevator as well because you actually hear the elevator dings you do and, and their, their points time exactly with, with a ding <laughs> yeah. nice, like, oh audio yeah the, the thumbs up with, and smile move yes, ding. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end they do that epic like hand crown thing for their oh, final pose oh yeah mm-hmm. queens I like that a lot queens All right. Queen. spelled K-W-E-E-N Let's take it to the music. So, Michaela, who who made this song? Okay, well, this was produced by Star Wars. What? A.K.A. Galactica. A.K.A. Björdur We Tonde. And possibly lyrics by someone named Athena. I couldn't find any more information on that. Mysterious. They've worked on a few B-side and A-side tracks for groups like AOA, Twice, and 101. Mm. And they've worked, they used to work with Brave Brothers. Brave Brothers. And that kind of transferred Brave over. Brothers, Brave Brothers, I remember that. Yeah. Brave Brothers. That style kind of transferred over, so Brave they're very, very synth heavy, very EDM heavy. <laughs> yes. horns. Brave Sound. <laughs> for me, going into this debut, the big question that I had at least in my mind was how this group was going to differ from another within the label once thrice what I, i'm forgetting <laughs> to remember what it was <laughs> but <laughs> Very it was funny. a larger nine member group so aside from the member difference and as we've discussed mm-hmm. the visually this is something different that perhaps we wouldn't see from twice it's a bit more empowering mm-hmm. but what we also <laughs> Ooh, saw the shade truth oh. be told twice is way too egg you but uh, okay, mm. sorry. Wow, I just invited all the ones to hate our show. Yeah, bring <laughs> but, it on. <laughs> um, well, that, there it is. <laughs> in addition to all those things, the big difference we heard was also in the sound. And there's so mm. much texture and vocal effects in this song that we just wouldn't yeah. get from their other label mates. Specifically, it's that grit and distortion. And I hear that the most pronounced in the last chorus. You even hear like motor like rev sounds like during the the bridge that mm. Twice would never, ever give you that like <laughs> Your you know, faith could engine. never. <laughs> well, it's, it's just off brand for Twice, right? Yeah. Just keep on dreaming. 
like same thing with yeah. the pitch bending. Yeah, like that's they true. shift their voices going down, and you wouldn't get that again from twice. Maybe this is a pain point for you guys, and I, I think I'm I'm kind of getting the rough sense from other people who don't like this song. Mm. It's in the hyper repetition of the instrumental. It's that same synth bass that you hear from the very beginning all the way through yeah. to the end. <laughs> One might say the same thing about CLC's No, or that hella Tapoc catchy song, Bosses <laughs> TWIT. Both very catchy, yeah. both incredibly repetitive in that instrumental. And you have that in this song, mm. but for those other th- songs, like I guess they just passed that catchy threshold where you're willing to listen to it over and over. When that hook isn't catchy as it is in this case unfortunately Mm. it runs the risk of becoming very annoying very quickly well tell us how you really feel Peter. (laughs) (laughs) well i mean i I definitely agree with that when i first heard this song the synth is very repetitive and the thing is when that chorus hits because it's there the whole time and you're just adding things onto it when the chorus finally dropped it felt sort of like noisy and cluttered almost Mm -hmm. so that's why when my first listen i was sort of turned off a little bit by it but that could have just been you know youtube audio messing with the compression and everything like that but even uh, going um, back and listening it to- was definitely not youtube <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> all right sorry <laughs> no no disclaimer i, it I was, work it at was YouTube. not youtube <laughs> it was maybe my my speakers were anyway but yeah, yeah no I, I get that it's it's repetitive there are some instances where the mixing itself is probably a little bit too mm. heavy because it's so synth heavy the whole time. I, I agree, actually. The first time I listened to it, I had to look around at my other tabs, like, is there another song playing at the same time? <laughs> it's it a just lot. felt yeah, like a, a lot, lot yeah, was going there. on. I felt, uh, I heard like dissonance almost with too mm-hmm. many sounds layered. Yeah, very on. unintentional dissonance. Like, we mm. want that edgy texture. We want that distortion, right? Because they're girl crush mm. and they're, they're, they can't be catarized. They cannot be caged. <laughs> a joke for the producers. They, they they cannot be compressed. Ooh, wow. All two of you producers got that <laughs> joke. <laughs> so they break out of that. And, they, and as a result, they, they cause a lot of redlining uh, in their song. Or at least it sounds that way. In this case, because the instrumental is so noisy, it sort of makes those transitions a little too hard. Mm. Whereas in some cases, K-pop songs can be sort of that frankenstein mix of like different things. And it, it you know, it's super yeah. awesome. To me, and, even and, with you know, those audible shifts, both mm-hmm. from going to the verse to the pre-chorus and then back to the chorus which in the chorus borrows a lot of the same instrumental from the verses it still feels very cohesive to me and that cohesion mm. continues even into the two count them two breakdowns mm. <laughs> right one could say all those breakdowns are in there just to make sure we can get like more like floor choreography in there. I yeah, think so. That's the the extra, reason. Honestly, the, extra the, the breakdown is serves as like a dance break. <laughs> totally. And honestly, I think it feels a bit forced. The breakdowns mm. are really short. Uh, it feels like the girls are rushing through the choreo, trying to get down on the floor, trying to get back up and change back into egg-yo mode <laughs> like within a few <laughs> seconds. <laughs> right. It's like, just give them a whole song like that. Mm-hmm. Don't try and cram in everything into the debut track. Yeah. Oh, and and Ari- Ariana left a note here saying that it reminds her of Momoland's random rap breaks. I completely agree, but I think these are executed even worse. Wow, yeah. you guys. Uh, wow. <laughs> I, I disagree. I vehemently disagree. I, right. I think it's still cohesive, even though it's a very interesting structure. And then just last like random like production stuff, if you listen in, going back to the visuals, like you said, this is very colorful, very explosive, Caesar inducing possibly. Well there are these awesome like firework sounds i don't know what the technical term for them we call them like howlers it's those mm. those ones they go pew oh, oh really? yeah, like yeah, it yeah. falls you hear those mm-hmm. throughout the song and they, they specifically start after the first verse mm-hmm. there's an awesome panning effect where you hear it first on your left side and then your right side or your right side and then your left side so it really adds this cool sort of scope like to the pong. soundscape of yeah. the song <laughs> yeah. If you're wearing headphones. And again, it's and I, fireworks. It's like, oh, celebrating the debut of our, our new group. Woo, it's very yeah. it's very fun. Pew, pew, pew. Nice. 
I have to go back and look for that. Yeah, and then once you listen to it, it's hard not to hear it. Like once you realize like the sound, it's it's like the cowbell in in Love Scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it also reminds me of that theremin sound that you hear in Twice's TT. It also oh boom. yeah, boom. Uh-huh. Boom. yeah, nonstop. <laughs> Maybe that's just something in the in the JYP production studio. They're like, oh, haven't used this in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and there are in certain cases where you hear that sort of firework sound actually imitated in the synths that you hear throughout the song as well too. Mm. It's a maybe, I don't know maybe it's the awesome way to add like energy to a song or only cool songs have <laughs> ascending and descending sense. Or the guy who created TT just walked over across the building and said, dude, you want to hit? This is what you gotta do. Have a really yeah. annoying <laughs> top secret thing that goes <laughs> secret throughout <weapon>. the song <laughs> that's gonna irritate everyone when they hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cannot be unheard. Don't care what people say I'm talking to myself Let's give our final score. So for the concept, that includes the visuals, (laughs) the dancing, the message, one to five. One being lowest, five to highest. How would you rate it, Michaela? I'm going to rate this a three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, when I first saw it, it reminded me of a lot of other music videos I'd seen, specifically YG music videos. So, but it's still a a good concept, but again, nothing really innovative going on here. Yeah. 3.8 for me, because I just like the visuals of telling that message. The colorful Mm. rainbow orgasm works for me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Stephanie, got what it is your too. score? It scaled really quickly. <laughs> exactly, right. That escalated quickly. Um, <laughs> I really like what Peter just said, that the visuals in the video do a great job of conveying the message. And I think that makes me feel much better about the, the concept of the music video itself. Mm. I'm going to go with 3.5 on concept. Oh, I think it's solid. Okay. So moving on to the audio. Purely the sound, the music itself. One to five, one being the lowest, five being the highest. I'm going to have to give this song a 2.4. It passes all the production value that we like. I think it's a cohesive song, but uh, it gets annoying, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Stephanie. Did you just say 2.4? I did. Yeah. And Peter (laughs) was the one that liked it. (laughs) Well, I, I, I disagree with your critique, but that still doesn't mean that I still can't not like it. Like I, I, oh, okay. it's still annoying. Okay. So wow, Peter's really <laughs> switching it up on us. Okay, Got it. Stephanie. So for me, audio is pretty low as well. Uh, Two point five. I think because there is a part of it I like, which is the verse. It makes me feel like I'm in a, a crowded nightclub. Yeah, yeah, that's just kind of familiar and fun for me. But the rest of the song, not doing it. For me, I, for some reason, it's also a solid three. And mm. I don't know if it's just because I had to listen to it over and over again preparing for this episode or if it was really just like an earworm song for me. So because I have that skewed, I, I still want to listen to it. Do you think it's still going to be on your playlist next week? Ooh, sounds like that's a no. I mean, if our, if our listeners follow our YouTube page, I have a, a like a curated playlist of all like my picks for the week. So I listen. To, I go through a lot of songs through the week. So I don't. I don't really know. Sounds like know. that's a no, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> guys, guys, subscribe to our YouTube. Side note. But Great point. Yeah. Okay. Little little plug there. All right. So <clears throat> we've gone through the whole video. Moributo by Kagachi. <laughs> but in the Top end, <laughs> we are. Yeah, we are. We, we are. <laughs> All right. But at the end of the day, was Itzi's Tala Tala Day Bok or not? not? Peter's going first. <laughs> Peter. Day walk or not? Yeah, my Risk brain it all. froze. My brain froze. Risk um, it all, Peter. Three, two, one. Not. Ah! <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, Stephanie. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Not. Sorry. Oh, wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 
It's actually a day walk. No, oh, no, 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 no. Girl, don't lie to yourself. <laughs> Search your feelings. <laughs> it's in you to say no, to, to, to say not to the song. It, That's the it's thing. It's not I, on your replay list. You're not going to listen to the song. I got the highest score for audio. I think I have to say it's a day mm-hmm. walk. Okay. I think I have to say it's a day I walk. I still love you. I you betray your, your feelings and, and your heart about this song. <laughs> We've already offended all the onces this episode, but I guess we'll offend all the yeah. Yitzis too. Probably the army somehow. 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 <laughs> we'll offend the armies. But <laughs> no, never. Guys, going into this episode today, like, even as I was running home to record this episode, I'm like, yeah, this song is Tabok because of the message. But, like, when you forced me to count down, my instinct was to say no. Mm. And I got to stay by that. <laughs> I like that new system just to, like, put people on the spot. Three, two, one, bam. Yeah. You better keep yeah. doing that. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, but thanks. so <laughs> even though even though Michaela gave it a tabak, which is a lie, yeah, um, Ariana said to read this note in the event that there were a zero tabak, but uh, we'll read it oh. anyway. So Got she it. says, <laughs> "Y'all are wrong, but I forgive you. Some of us oh. need time to process greatness." I'm not going to say this is wow. a perfect song. The cheerleader-like mm. bridge was not my favorite or video. The Kias made me so uncomfortable. <laughs> but for a debut, this is one of the strongest concepts I have seen in a while. In just one mm-hmm. video, I got to know each girl's unique personality. I love that it was girl crush, but with an element of lightheartedness that is needed with such young girls. It never mm. felt forced. The choreo is unbelievably good. Unbelievably good? I love seeing girl groups take on challenging moves and formations while also being super cute. And the song mm-hmm. is catchy AF. I would have liked to see more of their vocal talent, but to get a song stuck in my head so fast is rare. It's unique, especially for JYP. And lastly, mm. can I say how much I love the love myself messaging coming from girl groups right now? We had A Pink with I Love Myself Too Much to Settle, CLC with I Love the Way I Choose to Look, and now it's Red Lip? No. <laughs> High Heels? No. no. Handbag? No. <laughs> Gudu? It's my no. favorite. <laughs> Gabang? No. no. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry, continue, right, guys. Peter. And now it's <laughs> Itzy with I Love Myself the Way I Am, and I Don't Care What You Think. As Peter would say, this is hella Tabak. Oh, that's why Tabak. Peter read it. Well, uh, no, I, I didn't even see that, but uh, that, that's great. <laughs> So that wraps it up for this episode of Daybok or Not. Wrapping it up, we have some listener feedback. You can always chat with us on Twitter at the Kpopcast. Or shoot us an email with your constructive feedback and episode ideas at kpopcastshow at gmail.com. So we heard from our good friend Agashikaro, who says, I like the song, but I find it maybe too K-lassic. I expected something Ooh. new and catchy. JYP managed this with SK. I hope they will do the same with Itzy. Hmm. I had that same thought as well, listening to the song, like, huh, this could have come out a few years ago and I wouldn't have noticed. Mm-hmm. Mish Bangtong said, I like this song, but I don't think it has the JYP sound I'm used to hearing, even though I can't put my finger on what that is. Maybe that's why they say it's different. It's different with a Z. <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> anyway, my fave is the one with the buns. I like the. Uh, it means hair buns. Hair buns. <clears throat> hair buns. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Poignant clarification. I like Got her it. severe look, and Ooh. I heard she's the leader. Yeah. She certainly is. Very strong. Fierce. The Rawr. K-pop cast is produced by Peter Lowe, Stephanie Parker, Ariana Khan, edited by Peter Lowe and Michaela J. And Raman Mon runs our Instagram. Signing off, let our listeners know where they can find you online. You can find me at Michaela J. K-pop. I'm at DJ Peter Lowe. And I'm at S. Parker 2 on Twitter. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share this episode online. And give us five stars. Five stars. All the five stars. Yes. And don't forget five to stars. subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Yes. I want to, I want to, I want to.
Stephanie's picks 2019. Can we set that up? Uh, sure. Tayman. <laughs> Tayman. I can do it. Tayman. I'll log in and do it. Tayman. Yeah. It'll just be all Tayman all the time. I was kidding. <laughs> I, I, mean, I would. That's not a bad have thing. Have no problem with that. Yeah, I, I think we all. Yeah, and ats.